In this video, uh, we're going to look at maximum and minimum problems. So these are all going to be kind of real life problems. Um, and these are the questions that are going to come up on your exam. So we're going to have four videos on it. And it's going to be the first one. It's going to slowly go through the method you should take to approach these problems. So the calculus, it's all about calculus as well to find the maximum or the minimum. The calculus itself isn't too hard. The hardest part is starting the question basically. Um, so in the first video we're just going to go through kind of quite easy example but it's probably the most important video because it's going to go through the method step by step. So I'm going to write the steps over here so it's going to go step one is going to be to write our equation okay that's all that's just going to be to start the problem write equation I'm going to say two is going to be to let's say write equation again but it's this time you're gonna to have to write the equation in one variable, okay? And you'll see what this means later. Uh, write equation in one variable. Three. Differentiate. Again, we're doing calculus, so the third step would be to differentiate it. And four then is to find maximum or minimum. Okay, so hopefully those kind of make sense now, but they will make more sense once we start the question. Um, so just keep these in mind. We're going to go through them uh, when we're going through this video and the question. Okay, so the question now, I say, there's a farmer and he has 100 meters of fencing and he wants to make a field. Uh, so there are loads of different shapes he can make the field in. He can make it kind of a rectangle like this. He can make it a long, thin rectangle like that, or he can make it a perfect square. Uh, and they're all going to have different areas, even though they have the same perimeter. So he wants to find, so the question will say, what values of x and y give maximum possible area? Okay, so I'm just writing it just in shorthand there. So what values of x and y give the maximum area? And the values of x and y will determine the shape of the, of the field, if that makes sense. Okay, so... The first thing, we're going to follow the steps. So the first step is to write our equation. So our equation, we want to find the area. So we'll write A, okay? Uh, actually, wait, before I do that, I'm actually just going to write 1 beside this. So this is step 1. A is equal to, so the area of a rectangular field is going to be the length by the width. So it's going to be X by Y. Okay, but this isn't much good to us because it's in two variables. It's in X and Y. So we can't do much with it. So now we're going to go on to step 2 is going to be write the equation in one variable. And this is kind of normally the most important part of it. Um, so how do you change y into x? You can't just put x there instead because y and x aren't the same thing. Uh, but you can find y in terms of x. That's what it's called. So generally, they've given you one piece of information in the question and you'll, you'll be able to use this to find one variable in terms of the other. Okay, so I know I'm saying one variable in terms of the other. You might not be totally sure what that means, but it isn't isn't too bad at all. Uh, I'll go through for this one. So for this one, the piece of information is that the perimeter is equal to 100 meters, okay? So we know that the perimeter has to be this side, plus this side, plus this side, plus this side. So I'll do it in purple here. I'm gonna say that that's also Y, and that side is also X. Yeah, because it's a rectangle, they have to be the same size. So that means the perimeter, so I'm gonna say 100 is equal to 2X plus 2Y. Yeah, does that make sense? Because that side plus that side, that's 2y, and that side plus that side, that's 2x, okay? So that means if we divide everything by 2 here, we're going to find that 50 is equal to x plus y, yeah? And now we can write 50 minus x is equal to y. I'm just going to rewrite that, that y is equal to 50 minus x. So that I'm just writing it from left to right. It's easier to understand. So now we have y we have y in terms of x. So you might think, why are we doing this now? But it'll become clear now in a second. And you're going to do this every single time. You want to find one variable, so y in terms of x. So hopefully that makes sense, what I'm saying there, y in terms of x, that it's just this is y and this is what y is equal to, but except with x there instead of y. So maybe I'm over-confusing it there. But if we write the area now, we can write a is equal to x, and instead of y, we can write this here because they're the same thing so we're going to sub that into our question 50 minus x and now 
a is going to be equal to 50x minus x squared. And this is basically the whole trick to the question. Once you have this, the rest of it should be fine. So it's about finding the equation in one variable. So we want the equation of area all in terms of one variable, all in terms of x. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. We're going to go on to number three now. It's going to differentiate it. So I'll go question three, or part, sorry, not question three, step three. Uh, do this in this color here. So step three is to differentiate it. So if a is equal to 50x minus x squared, okay? So if we think of this, that's, that, that's a quadratic equation there. 50x minus x squared, because there's an x squared in it, it's quadratic. And also there's a minus before the x squared, which means it's going to be a u-shaped quadratic, okay? Um, just bear that in mind. So we're going to differentiate it. So we're going to say da dx. So you might not have seen that before, but it's still the exact same as saying dy dx. So uh, in other questions, you might have had y is equal to 50x minus x squared. We can write dy dx. It's the same if you have a. So it's, this is the same thing. It's just, just a different symbol, okay? Uh, the same rules of differentiation. So if you differentiate this, it's going to go to 50 minus 2x, okay? And again, the, the question is we will find the maximum area, okay? And if we go into our curve, it's going to look something like this. So we want to find basically this point here. That's going to give us our maximum area because that, that's a maximum. It's a local maximum or a turning point. So if you remember back to the other videos, we wanted to find the local maximum of a curve. We let it equal to zero. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say that is equal to zero. da dx is equal to zero. And now we're going to be able to solve this. 50 minus 2x is equal to zero. And we're going to be able to find what our value of x is. Okay? So um, that's going to be 50 is equal to 2x. I'm just going to write that another way around. 2x is equal to 50. And then finally, x is equal to 25. Okay? We also want to find our value for y. So if y is equal to 50 minus x, then um, I'm going to say that, so y is equal to 50 minus x. Same thing as saying that y is equal to 50 minus 25, because x is 25. And then y is equal to 25. Okay? So if you look at this here, if y is 25 and x is equal to 25, go back up. That means the shape that gives the maximum area is a perfect square, yeah? Because if the two sides are 25, that means it's a square shape. So does that make sense? So that's, that's basically our, our answer there, x and y. They give the maximum area, so 25 and 25, okay? And the last step then, just quickly, right in this little box here, what is that maximum area? Okay, so if we get step four, find the maximum min. So we, we have found that the values that give the maximum min, but the, this, then we also want the actual maximum area. So I'll do that in red here. So area is equal to 25 by 25. Yeah, because area is equal to, ooh, where is it? X by Y. And uh, X and Y are both equal to 25. So that means the area is equal to, so the area is equal to 25 by 25, which is equal to, 625 meters squared, okay? And 625 are the amount of points you're going to get if you watch all of these videos and sign up to exam learn. But A is equal to 625 meters squared, and now we have our question finished. So I'm going to go run through that one more time quickly, because it's, even though it's an easy enough example, it's the most important uh, video we're going to have just because it goes through the steps so slowly, okay? So... You're going to have some sort of question here uh, and one piece of information and they're going to ask say what values of x and y give the maximum area so it's always going to be asking for a maximum or a minimum so the first step is to write an equation for what they want so you're looking for the area so write an equation for the area the next step is to write the equation in one variable so you're going to have to change one of the variables uh, by using the piece of information they give you so they give us that 100 meters is the perimeter you have to use that to find y in terms of x. Generally, it's going to be y in terms of x. And then you're going to basically use that piece of information to write area in terms of only one variable. So I'm talking about area here, but they could be asking you anything in other videos, but it's going to be asking for you for area in terms of just one variable. The next step then, step three, is to differentiate it, let it equal to zero, and then find your values that give you the maximum and the minimum. And the last step then is to find the actual maximum area. Okay, so sorry that was quite a long video, but uh, 
Hopefully that all made sense and we're going to do a few more examples of it uh, so you can get to grips with it better. But just make sure you follow, we're going to follow these steps in each of the videos, okay? Hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.